It's another way to look at the things we already know with our point of discontinuity and our vertical asymptotes. They actually cause a jump. You see their end behaviors go in different directions. Um, we just call this, by the way, calculus does for, for limits. As it approaches, sometimes you have an open, whether it's in a, a expression or it's in a graph, and then you look to see what you have here. Now, we said on Friday, Thursday, one of those days, when you look at this function, if you were looking for the value of 3, then that value is this guy right here. That value is negative 2. It's y value. If you're looking for the limit as x approaches 3, then you're looking for this value. This one doesn't count. This means this is a function. It passes a, a vertical line test. And that's the value of that function when x is 3 at that point. However, if we're looking at a limit, a limit is a point that it approaches from the left and from the right. So if we're looking at that, and this is your point of discontinuity, and we wanted to fill this in, what y value would we fill that in with? 3. So your limit is 3. See the difference between the limit and the value of your function at that point? That's probably the most confusing part. Okay? I'm going to jump over to number three since I have it here. Be careful of this guy. This one is the limit of this function when x approached 5. So when x approached 5, it did. It had a limit right here, which was 1. What you probably looked at is as x approached negative 5. What's the limit as x approaches negative 5? No limit. There, no limit exists. Because we take a jump there. We don't have continuity in this graph. And right here, we have a non-removable continuity. This, sorry, discontinuity. A non-removable discontinuity. This is a jump discontinuity. Okay. This one exists. It is a point on the x is equal to 5. Okay? All right, let's jump down to number 2. Number 2, as your function approaches 2 from the right and from the left, it does not converge to the same y value. So this is a discontinuity, and it is a non-removable. It is a jump discontinuity, because we jump from one number to the next. It is a jump discontinuity, and the limit does not exist. Okay. Um, let's jump to number 5, if you don't mind. At which value of the values here is this graph discontinuous? What value of x is this graph discontinuous at? 4. If I put my pencil down and I kept on going, when I got to x is 4, whoops, i got to jump over this. It is not continuous. Okay? There's a break in my graph. If there's a break in my graph anywhere, this is not continuous. So it is discontinuous when x is equal to 4. Is this a removable, so let's a removable discontinuity or non-removable? Removable. Can I fill this in with its limit? What is the limit as x approaches 4? Zero. Isn't that the y value right here? I can close that in. This is a removable. This is a point of discontinuity. Your point of discontinuity is your removable one. Your asymptote is non-removable. That causes that jump. The without bounds. Or this, this is the point jump in it. That's going to cause that not to be able to connect. Um, this guy here, as x approach 3, well, according to this, the only domain restriction I have is with the radical. But for my x, I should be able to plug an x in here and see if this works. And 
excuse me. This this guy was a fluff. It didn't come out very dark on yours, and some of you caught it, and it wasn't working, so we realized it was a plus. So that has a value there. Okay, the value can exist there. Okay. Um, again, looking at your last bit. Looking at graph six. Where is this discontinuous? Well, if you started here and went down like this, how do you get to this guy? You gotta pick your pen up and jump up here. This is an asymptote right here. And it caused your end behavior with, to be without bounds. It'll never converge to the same point. So it's discontinuous when x is equal to seven. Is this a removable or a non-removable? Non-removable. I cannot find a point that it will converge at. The limit does not exist when x is equal to as x approaches seven. Okay, jump over to number nine since we're right here, if you don't mind. Number nine is a piecewise. So it, it depends on where your domain is. Now notice, this is the part that we're concerned about. If the value at negative 2 for the first graph function is the same as the value as negative 2 in your second function, that means one was open, one was closed, they converged at the same point. If those two values are different, then we have a jump. Then they're not going to converge at the same point. So if you just use this value and plug in your negative 2 into the first one, then plug in your negative 2 into the second one, if their y values are the same, that means at that point, one was open, one was closed, they converged at the same point. So this, was a, this is a continuous graph. If these two y values are different, then one's here, one's above, one's below, they don't meet at the same point, then it would not be continuous. So all you really need to do is look at the point that they have in common. Okay. Most of this was just kind of like a review of where the continuity and the discontinuities are. This is a very good one, and I don't know if you real if you had a chance to look over those reviews that I gave you. A lot of them are, are just like like number seven. Number seven. So say you factor top and bottom, numerator and denominator, and you can reduce. If you can reduce a factor, that's a point of discontinuity. Whatever's left in your denominator is going to be your vertical asymptote. And remember, you can always graph this to, to confirm it on your calculator. Now, none of these could be reduced. These guys are both vertical asymptotes. So when x is equal to negative 7 and when x is equal to 1, it's going to cause your graph to go off at those points. Therefore, this is not continuous at negative 1. It has an asymptote there. The limit will not exist. Graph it. You'll see the graph of it. The limit will not exist. Number 10 again was piecewise. And what you care about are the 0 and the 2. Plug in x is 0 into both of them. If they came to the same point, then it's continuous at that point for that y value. Then plug in 2. Now notice, this is also continuous. So this whole function is continuous. Where 1 is open, 1 is closed. Bless you. 1 is open, 1 is closed. It's still a function, and I can continue right through it. And you can actually graph the little pieces and see if it's continuous or not. Questions? Okay. All right. And then in the bottom part, 8 and 11. Sorry I'm jumping around, but it's easier when it, once I scroll. Number 8 again, piecewise. So it's the value that they overlap in. The x is negative 1. So we put it in. 
We plug it into the first one, we get a 1. We plug it into the second one, we get a 0. This is not the same point. So one of them at the 0, at the negative 1, 0, this guy is going to be closed. Oh, sorry, this guy is going to be open. And at the negative 1, 1, this guy is going to be closed. They don't converge to the same point. So this is not continuous. It's a non-removable point of discontinuity. Number 11, you want to look at your negative 2 and your 1. Negative 2, they didn't meet at the same point. And the 1 did. So the negative 2 is discontinuous when x is negative 2. Kind of makes sense, right? Yeah? Right, because we want to know where does that graph meet. So when we do this guy, we said it x is less than negative one. That's the last one. And remember, like putting the close sign there. Then we did then we did negative two, negative three. So we graph this guy. So let's plug this in. This is one. This is four. This is nine. So when x is negative one, we're a one. When it's negative two, we're a four. It's a parabola. It's going like this, right? Close. Right. Now, we come down to this piece. We say start at negative 1, go to, go to 0, go to 1. Now this is open. So plug this in. So 1 minus 1 gives us 0. Minus 2 gives us negative 2. Oh, a minus, I'm sorry. This will give us a 0 here. Now, if you just plot this point, I'm using a different color. At the negative 1, 0, these did not meet. This guy is going to be also a parabola that's going to go like this. But this, it did not somewhere like that. It did not meet in the same point. So even though we say as x is negative 1, that's where our limit. Does it approach that at the same point? And it doesn't. The value of this, right, the value is different than if it's continuous at this point. The value of this guy is the first one. 1. If I said f of 1, I have to say 1. But my limit, whether it's continuous or not, is it's this piece right here, not continuous. Mm -hmm. That is a big question, because normally we just look at to see which one was open, which one is closed, because that's the value of your function. As the limit approaches it, is it at the same point? Okay? Did you guys have a number 11? And then number 12? Oh, number 11 was up there? Okay. Then don't worry about those. But this is a good example in number 11 of your point of discontinuity. Once you factor and reduce, and you should be seeing this in your reviews, the point that you are able to take out is your point of discontinuity. What's left, that reduced function, says, okay, this guy is a vertical asymptote. There's no way to remove that. So, um, discontinuous when x is 1 and when x is negative 1. However, when x is equal to 1, I can remove that. That's that little point I can fill in. When x is equal to negative 1, I cannot remove that. That's an asymptote. And graph it. Make sure you put this in your y equals. It really makes a big difference looking at your graph, looking at your table. See where your errors are. Okay? All right, so let's hit them again. This is a good review for your quiz as well. So, finding your limit. The infinity. As x approaches infinity, whether it's from the negative side or the positive side, you had three rules. And your rule said, look at the highest exponent of the function. So I've got an x squared and a 4x squared. If the numerator was less than the denominator, 
we had the asymptote y equals zero. Our limit would equal zero. If the numerator is equal to the denominator, x squared, x squared, and it's a good idea just to pull this piece out. Then you take the ratio of the coefficient. And that's it. That's your limit. Your asymptote would be y equals one fourth. Your asymptote would be here. Unfortunately, I did these out, but I don't, I didn't print them out because the graph is good for you to look at. It's your asymptote here that guides this. That you can see where your, your limit is removable, <coughs> non-removable, everything else. So remember your three rules for infinity. Whether it's negative infinity or positive infinity, it has the same three rules. It guides your end behavior. It just gives it a line that your graph is, rides along. The second one here, is we had to rationalize. So I cannot put an x in for my denominator because it will be undefined. So my goal is to see if I can eliminate, factor it out of there. So I have to rationalize the top by using its conjugate. So it's the same term, different signs. And since it's a fraction, I have to do the same to the numerator and the denominator. When you multiply the numerator, remember your perfect squares. Guys, multiply the first term. Radical times radical, it's topped out. Negative times a positive, and one times one. When you do the denominator, don't distribute. Slide it over. Just do x times this guy. It looks bad, but we don't care that it looks bad. Now, go to the numerator, gather your left terms. We can take out the one, and we're left with x over. Remember, our goal was to see if we could factor out that x. So can we now factor it out? And what's left in the numerator? One. Good. Now, it's okay that we have this because all we care about is substituting in x equals zero. Now you can plug the x of zero in there. <coughs> the left one. So one over the square root of zero plus one plus one gives us one half. So this limit is equal to one half. This was one of the other ways we went through this algebraically. We rationalized the numerator. We want to be able to factor out that denominator because it's not plus the zero in there. So our goal is to see if we can factor it out. Remember those? This one in particular, do you remember this and will remember this for Wednesday? I'm sure, right? Do we remember this one? Good. Okay. This guy, so I try. I try to plug a negative three in and what happens to my denominator? Zero. So therefore we can't do it. So we factor and reduce. How do I know that I have to factor and reduce? Because first I try to plug the negative three in. It won't work. So I factor. My numerator factors to x plus 3, x minus 2, and my denominator, x plus 3. The point, the factor that you reduce is your point of discontinuity. What's left is your factor form that you can now plug in your point of discontinuity. So now I can take this part of my function and plug this in. That's the limit of this equation, of this function. I can't plug it directly in, because I've got a problem with the denominator. So I factor and reduce. You always try to plug it in first, and put it in your calculator. I have all, all the graphs done out, which makes it a lot, a lot easier. You'll see your point of discontinuity. Actually, the thing is, you don't see your point of discontinuity, which makes you realize that it is because it looks like a smooth 
transition at the negative 3, because that's where your limit approaches, the negative 5. Okay? Now, this guy, I say, okay, can I plug in the negative 3? No. So I factor and reduce. Can I make factors that would reduce the factor of x plus 3? No. So this guy right here is going to be a vertical asymptote. So at the negative 3, is my function ever going to come to one point at the negative 3 that I can't use? No. So the limit does not exist. I cannot factor this back. Let me just see what your graph looks like. So the easiest way is to put it in your y equals. Let me show you what this graph looks like. All right, it's a little difficult to see. This guy is going like this, and this one is down here. You can't see it. It's way down. But do you see what this is? It, that's your without that. If you cannot factor out that x plus 3, then it stays in the denominator. If it stays in the denominator, it's a vertical asymptote, which causes your end behaviors to bounce in different directions. That's a without down point. So the limit does not exist. Now, if you get stuck, graph it. If you realize you can't factor it, you know, to do the quadratic and figure out what my roots are, but that doesn't help me get rid of the x plus 3. I want to be able to factor and reduce that guy. Alright. Um, I'm not going to do the sketch today, but I, wanted, I do want to describe the discontinuities. So, we're going to factor this. And which factor can we take out? Mm -hmm. X plus 3. It's the same as the other one, isn't it? Except I think it's reversed. It's in the denominator this time. So X plus 3 is your point of discontinuity. This is removable. Now to find out what its Y value is, and we did this when we were doing these graphs, we plugged it back into here. So we got 1 over negative 3 minus 2 is negative 1 fifth. So we had a point of discontinuity right here. So as x approaches negative 3, your limit is your y value. Okay. As x approaches 2, if this is the remaining part of this, and x approaches 2, and this won't work. What does that mean? The limit doesn't exist. Good. Limit does not exist. Because what is right here at x is 2? It's an asymptote. It's a vertical asymptote. Somewhere at x is 2, right here, my graph is going to go off in different directions. As x approaches infinity, negative infinity, either way, we use the three rules. We say, take the highest exponent, there's a 1, there's a 2 in the denominator. If the degree in the numerator is less than the degree in the denominator, then I'm equal to 0. Then there's your y equals 0. That's an asymptote too. So let me graph this and see in fact if it does fit there. And then you're going to fill out the rest. Um, we'll talk about your point of discontinuity in one more minute again, just going to put this in. I like this. So do you see how we tied this in with what we did before? Mm -hmm. 
Yo me llevo en esta cuarta con mi video de mi tanto, cuando yo estaba teniendo mi tanto horizontal arc control, mi vertical arc control. So we technically did all that. So your graph went like this, somewhere, and took a little jump like this. So you can see that this guy is your asymptote. And do you see your end behaviors lining up against that? It's approaching y equals zero from both sides. You can't really see where your negative three is. That's because it's a point of discontinuity. It looks like they made it continuous, but if you look at your table, negative three says error. So this is a removable point, and this is a non-removable. And then it looks like I can stay there. So here's your graph. There's your asymptote. This is non-removable. Here's your other asymptote here. This is where it's approaching the limit. So it's going like this. See, it slide along that. And the sky is going right along this one. That's what infinity means. As it goes out to infinity, it's close to the y equals zero. And again, you can't see that point of discontinuity. So that's why you know that's removable. It's as if you can fill right over it and complete your graph. So your graph is discontinuous at two points, but your point of discontinuity is irremovable, but your asymptote is not removable. No limit exists where x is 2. You are awfully quiet in here. Sure.